What's going on YouTube? This is a pretty exciting day. Android Police posted an article about uh, CyanogenMod 11 being available for the Nexus 5. And if I sound funny, I am sorry. I just got retainers yesterday. Um, if you saw my video I posted yesterday, I explained all of that. I'll try to remember the link in the description below. For those of you that are watching this video and haven't, weren't previously subscribed. Um, anyways, so CM11 is available for Nexus 5. What you're gonna need to do, which I highly encourage doing, is going to Titanium Backup and then hitting the little batch icon right here. And then when it loads up, I would go to uh, back up all user apps and data and then hit the little checkbox. It's gonna take a minute depending on how many apps you have. And when you do, go to schedules and then go to Dropbox and hit run. That way it takes everything and puts it on the cloud. You'll wanna do that because this device only has internal storage. If you do not see that option, hit menu, preferences, and then check the box that says enable uh, Dropbox. And you'll want to do that so that way it can, you know, upload to Dropbox. If this option is not, you know, selectable, that means you don't have Pro and you'll need to get to Titanium Backup Pro, which I have a very full in-depth review of Titanium Backup Pro. You should definitely check it out if you're, you know, new to rooting and backing up your phone, etc. So, wait for it to finish. I tried, but I had like a gigabyte of stuff. So, what I did was, I had this little card reader right here that I did a video on, and I'll try to remember the link to it in the description below. I took this SD card, I put it in there, and then I used like any file manager, like Root Explorer, Astro, anything. And then I went to my internal storage on here, I copied my Titanium Backup folder, I can show you right now actually. I copied my Titanium Backup folder um, from the internal storage over to the external storage on this thing. So we'll open up any file manager, We just Astro, uh, we'll just use that for an example. Whenever it goes back, okay, SD card, um, Titanium Backup, I'll hit Properties, and you'll see that it's 1.41 gigabytes. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. I'm gonna go to USB Storage, SDA1. This is where I copied over to, I'll hit Properties, and you'll see that it's 1.41 gigabytes. So all of my Titanium Backup backups are currently copied over to this SD card. So if we flash this ROM and we wipe our phone, everything we backed up is on here. Now you can also do an Android backup and you'll need to download an app called Recovery Tools right here. It's a little green circle. It's available in the Google Play Store for free. And then, um, no thanks. You'll go to Flash Trip Recovery You'll do 2632. Make sure it's Hammerhead. Of course, if you're watching this later on, there might be a newer version. So make sure it just matches your phone. Hit that. And then, do you want to reboot in the recovery? This is awesome because not very many tools let you choose to go directly to recovery after installing it. So you can hit yes, please, for the easiest way possible. I'm going to hit no thanks. And then I'm going to turn the phone off. Press OK. I'm going to hold volume down and power until we get here. And then you can choose volume down or volume up. So press volume up, press it again. And when you see recovery mode, hit the little power button. And now you should have twerp recovery um, because you just flashed it. All right. And so what I highly recommend doing is pressing backup and then choosing system. System, data, boot, EFS, and just those. Cache, that's nothing. You don't want to back up recovery because if you update your recovery later on, and you, you, you're going to keep restoring 2632 and say 2632 has a major bug, and they just released 2634. Yeah, so don't back up cache or recovery unless you absolutely want to. And then for storage, change it from internal to USB OTG if you have one of these. If you do not have one of these, you're just wasting your time because... This device only has internal storage and you could accidentally wipe it. So press OK and then choose um, backup name. It auto generated it and that name is just fine. So I'm going to hit back. Um, make sure you check in level compression for a smaller file size and then swipe to backup. I'll show you that process here in just a second. So the audio apparently was really, really bad. I forgot I had the setting changed um, when I didn't have my mic plugged in and when I did have it plugged in, it super amplified it and you couldn't make out anything I was saying and yeah. So all I'm doing is putting in the SD card, I'm changing it to USB OTG and yeah, I'm backing up the ROM to the SD card instead of my actual phone. 
Okay, so that took a while. As you see, it's 8 o'clock. It was 7.40 according to the time on here, which again is incorrect. So it took about 20 minutes. So um, at this point, you'll want to press back, go back, and give me just a second. All right, so the files are actually on this SD card. So I'm going to unmount my USB OTG. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to take out this SD card that has our backups on it. And I did this just to save time because I didn't, while this was backing up, I wanted to go ahead and transfer files to this one right here. So I'll, I'll plug that in to the bottom here. And then it lights up. And I don't know if it's going to mount it automatically or if I'm going to need to choose it. I'm going to choose it right now. All right, go back. And now I need you to go to wipe. And I need you to choose swipe to factor reset. And this is going to factor reset your phone to day one. Like, it's going to be, this is like, this is so you can flash a ROM. So, we're going to let this finish up here. It shouldn't take very long at all. Okay, this phone says it's 8.10. We started the backup at like 7.40. It finished at 8 o'clock. This is obviously taking longer than I expected to. So, in a minute here, I'm just about to power the phone down manually holding the power button until it shuts off. And then, I'm going to force it into recovery. And I'm going to try this again because this is taking too long. And my patients are running very thin. Five, four, three, two, one. I don't have time for this. What did I tell you? For some reason, 2632 on the X5 will not let you do a factor reset. I don't know what the issue is, but when I installed 2634 via Fastboot, it worked just fine. All right, so after all the frustration, we might be good to go. I used Fastboot. I did Fastboot, Flash Recovery, open and then hit tab and auto suggest whatever's in your platform tools folder and apparently there was a newer version <laughs> so let's go to recovery and let's see if this newer version addresses the issue i was just talking about this i was like it's a good idea to not back up the recovery we'll see at the top here um maybe hopefully soon Two, six, three, four. So we're gonna go to wipe and we're gonna choose back to reset and maybe this time it will wipe it. Hopefully. Oh yes, successful. We don't have to use another recovery. Two, six, three, two, it's not working correctly. You're gonna need two, six, three, four. Just Google twerp hammerhead and you can go to the twerp website, click download the latest image here and I'll have a link to it in the description. So we'll go to back, back, choose install and then right here if it's set to internal storage um depending on where you put the you'll need, you're going to need the cm11 m1 m means it's monthly which is more stable than a nightly and if it's a release candidate for cm10.2 or, or cm11 sorry then it's going to be more stable than a month than a monthly a release candidate and if you see a fully stable version then blast that so it goes nightly and then it goes monthly snapshots, and then it goes release candidate, and then it goes stable. So we're gonna go up here and choose our your USB OTG, hit that. We're gonna flash CM11, M1, Hammerhead, add more zips, G apps, KK, 2013, 11, 19. I'm gonna have links to the G apps in the description below so you can download them really quickly from my hosting service and no stresses or trouble at all. And then swipe to back up or swipe to flash. And I'll keep the description updated at always. I'll go back to this video every time there's a newer G apps and I will update the description with those correct G apps meant for CM11 Android 4.4. All right, that was really, really quick. We're gonna hit reboot system and hopefully we will see a Sanja mod logo. I don't know if they've officially updated it yet or if they're still gonna use CM10.2 um, this little spinning Android. Oh, it's different. It's freaking different. That is awesome. That is too cool. So this video is going to be a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, but it shows you how to back up your apps, um, sync them to the cloud or to a little card reader like this. If you want to use like, you know, any micro SD cards you may happen to have laying around. Um, again, you have a choice between syncing it to the cloud or syncing it to a little micro SD card. Or another option would be to use this little micro USB OTG cable, hook a flash drive into it, 
and then hook this up into the bottom like little charging data port thing and use this instead. The screen just went dim so it should be booting up very quickly. All right, so this is the welcome to signage mod. We're gonna hit next. And then I have an existing account, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign into it. It wants me to log into my Wi-Fi, so I will go ahead and do that right now. Actually, this is my 2.4 gigahertz, so I'm gonna use my five gigahertz. Oh, oh, come on. This one right here. All right, so after you type in your Wi-Fi password, hit connect, and then it's going to check for updates. I'm gonna log in. All right, so I've entered in my password and my email. It's gonna log into my Gmail account, and it says, do you have a Google account? I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes, and then I'm gonna sign in here too. All right, so I've logged into my Gmail account. I'm gonna go ahead and accept the terms and hit okay. And then I choose everything but this communication one. I already get enough emails from YouTube and GooTube and everything there is. So um, if I ever get into an emergency situation where I need, you know, 911 or Sprint or T-Mobile or whoever to look at my phone, I'm going to go ahead and allow them privilege to do that. I'm not someone that breaks the law, so I don't care if they know where my phone's at. And this one right here is the, I don't know what launcher 3 is. Let's do just once. Maybe this is Science Month's launcher. I'm not quite sure. It looks like it is because it's got Apollo and and that stuff. But when you hit this one right here, this is the default um, KitKat launcher that you're going to find on like Nexus 5 or any other device that has KitKat. So that's pretty cool. If I hit home, I can do launcher 3. That, that's pretty neat. I didn't realize that. So a lot of really cool things are in this. Um, if we go to settings, you'll see interface. And then for the status bar... I can have my battery circle with percentage. So there's a little number inside my circle letting me know how much battery there is. So I don't need another app like Battery Reborn to sit there and take up my notifications the whole time. And then for the quick settings panel, uh, for a quick pull down, I like to disable that because as of right now, if you drag down this side, it's going to bring up your um, your power toggle widgets. And if you drag down this side, it's going to bring up your notifications. Well, a lot of times I use my right hand and I end up pulling this side down when I want to get to my notifications. You can swap between them or you can go to quick pull down, choose off. And now when you drag from the right, it's going to take you to notifications no matter where you're at. And then if you want to get to your quick toggles, you can just hit that. So I like to disable that. And as in time, they'll have more stuff. Like they'll have AM, PM. They'll have more stuff in there. So notification drawer, buttons and layout. The quick launch shortcuts. Buttons. here. There's You can change what all buttons show up down here. There's just too many little options to play with that it's just it just sweetens the pot even more. So to get your developer options down here, you go to about phone. You go to the build number. Keep tapping on that. Go back. And now you'll see developer options. You can go in here and you can enable Android debugging. You can choose advanced reboot where if you hold down this and you choose reboot, now you'll see recovery. If that's not checked and you hold down the power button, it'll just say, do you want to reboot? So yeah, I choose advanced reboot. And then you'll also want to go to um, security. If you're going to be using Titanium backup, you'll want to go to security. I uncheck that. I uncheck verify apps. I check unknown sources so I can install apps from outside of the Play Store um, and Titanium Backup. And so you got Privacy Guard, SMS message list. That's another thing if you go to, um, to uh, where is it at? Um, more. And then default messaging app. Look at that. With Signage Mod, they let you use the normal messaging app instead of Hangouts. So that just, oh, this ROM just makes this phone even better than it was before. It's just freaking amazing. So you still have all your mobile network stuff, your LTE, um, network, too much stuff. So under display, we can have, you know, I like to have a, f a few minutes of timeout, wireless display, pulse notification light is enabled, wireless display is off by default, um, tap to pay, storage, um, as you can see, some of my storage is still being taken up because I did not wipe my internal storage. So if I download an app like Titanium Backup from the Google Play Store, and there's my video. If you're, if you're within the app, you can hit play and it'll play my video. So open that up, asking for root user. Just remember this choice always and hit allow. And then it's just saying my Android ID is different than my last one. Um, 
from what they say, is to restore the previous ID. That way, you don't run into any conflicts with, um, you know, because if you keep if you have a new ID, then it some of the apps won't restore correctly. So you'll want to restore your previous ID when you do it. Oh, and that first boot always takes the longest. Every other boot doesn't take or shouldn't take very long at all. My screen just went dim, so it's telling me it's going to boot up. And this is all real time. This is, you know, pretty quick. I don't really have any complaints. And now when we open up Titanium Backup, right here, it's going to, um, SU binary is out of date, blah, blah, blah. Um, what you can do is install Super SU from the Google Play Store and you can fix that. So it automatically pulled up my license that was on my SD card. So when I go to backup and restore, check this out. Without moving anything from my SD card to my phone, all of my stuff's here. I can start restoring all of my apps, like my PlayStation app, because I have a PS4 and I play on the PlayStation Network. My PlayStation Network ID is what would Josh you, just like my YouTube ID, my Twitter ID, my Instagram ID. Pretty much everything is www.joshdew. If you want to play with me on PSN or, you know, tweet me on Twitter or like my Facebook page or follow me on Instagram, whatever you want to do. So this is dope. This is awesome. Um, I'm going to choose Launcher 3 because it looks like this is the app that Cyanjamod made. Well, the home thing they did. And if you go to the settings... Uh, and if you go to home, you can choose what, like, you know, launcher or launcher three. <laughs> really, really cool stuff. You can install themes if you download them from the Google Play Store. That's about it. If you enjoyed the video, please do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up by clicking the like button below. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that red subscribe button. You won't miss out on any future videos that I upload. And you can go back and watch all my previous videos on Nexus 5. And in fact, I'll have a link in the description to my Nexus 5 playlist. Links to follow me on all of my social media accounts to be in the description below as well. Please click where it says show more and you'll be, you'll be able to expand the description and see all the links. This is what we're trying to do and I'm out.